I certainly hope your Thursday is going well so far. It is the 21st of July. Thanks for watching the Calvary Briefing. I don't have to tell you that the world in which we are all living here in the United States of America could definitely be called a negative world. And an article written by Janie Cheney in World Magazine grabbed my attention recently because the title was Alive in a Negative World. And that's the way many of us feel. This is such a, a, a negative environment. Uh, and yet, as God's people, how should we be coping? How should we be acting? Cheney is a student of history, and she goes back and looks at a situation from the abolitionist Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass was a former slave who then was a campaigner for the abolition of slavery. And he went and spoke all over the nation, making uh, a strong case for the abolition of slavery. Douglass was usually optimistic, but occasionally he would become very pessimistic as he saw how strong the roots of slavery went into society. He, he saw that it was such a great evil and that the only way to overcome it was going to end up being an armed conflict. And so during one of his discouraging moments as he was speaking, he was interrupted by another abolitionist, a tall woman, another former slave by the name of Sojourner Truth. And Sojourner Truth boomed out like a foghorn and said, Frederick... Is God dead? And Douglas, although he had many hecklers over the years, had no comeback for that. He was absolutely flummoxed by this, uh, this phrase from Sojourner Truth. Now, there's some discrepancy about where this happened. Did it happen in Boston or Ohio? But there's little doubt that it happened because if you go to the grave of Sojourner Truth, that question is on her headstone. Is God dead? As we look back through history, we see some very discouraging times, and we see some discouraging activities and things that happen. Uh, Martin Luther King battled racial inequity, and he ended up dying. But it, it seemed as if his assassination shocked the nation into making some changes in the area of racial equality. And as we look at the Jews living in Nazi Germany in the early parts of the 1900s, we realize that all looked very dark for them, and it did take a war that involved the entire world, but we see that it was stopped, this, this movement of trying to get rid of the entire Jewish nation. God is not dead. He isn't dead now. He wasn't dead and he isn't dead now. It's obvious, but it can be overlooked in our world. We can become so overcome with our situation. Another author by the name of Arthur Wren from the Manhattan Institute is writing many articles online, and he paints a really grim picture of what's going to happen in the next several years in these United States of America. Wren sees the church as continuing to become more divided and becoming even less effective in the world than it is now. And he sees us squabbling and arguing over all kinds of politics. Looking at the most recent poll in the New York Times today, our, our political parties are getting farther and farther apart and there is less and less common middle ground. Well, God is alive. He's alive in the world, but more than that, He's alive in us. And that's why we should relate to the world as Jesus relates to the world. He related to the world with compassion. He had compassion for the harassed sheep that He saw all around Him. And so as we live alive in a negative world, as we remember that God is not dead, 
May we remember these words of Jesus. May they ring out in our minds today, regardless of what is happening. Matthew 9, beginning at verse 35. Jesus went through all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And then he turned to his disciples and said, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. 